Welcome to another Algebra 1 lesson. Today we're working in Unit 1, Lesson Topic 7, Solving Literal Equations or Transforming Equations. Our objectives today are I will be able to solve any algebraic equation with multiple variables for a specified variable. I will be able to justify any step taken in the solution process by identifying the algebraic property. Those are our two objectives. We can't do objective number two or meet objective number two if we cannot do objective number one. You're going to see uh, a process here that's going to help us. So let's get this algebra one party started. What does it mean to solve for a specified variable? Well, to answer that question, first off, let's review what we've been doing up to this point. What we've been doing is solving equations that had one variable and all kinds of other numbers. In this lesson, we're going to solve equations that have more than one variable or all variables. We're going to be asked to solve for one of the variables. For instance, to solve for x would mean to get x by itself on one side of the equation with no x's on the other side, or x is equal to some type of expression. Now notice here, I have this, get x by itself. It's in red. You're going to hear me say a lot. And for instance, to solve for y would mean to get the y by itself on one side of the equation, with no y's on the other side. y is equal to something. And you're going to actually see that in slope-intercept form later on in the school year. We're working with solving literal equations, and one way we can do this is by using the do-undo chart. You can actually use these to solve multi-step equations. This is the first time I've used it. So if we're asked to solve the equation negative 5x plus y is equal to negative 56 4x, we have to ask ourselves, what is the first thing being done to x, the variable being solved for? What are we doing to x first? And when we ask ourselves that do part of the question, or these do questions to the x, we want to follow the order of operations. Following the order of operations, we are multiplying x by negative 5 and adding y to it. So following the order of operations, what we are doing to the x first is we are multiplying by negative 5. The second thing we're doing is we are adding y. The first thing we're doing is multiplying x by 5 right here. And the second thing we're doing is adding y. So when we go to solve this equation, what we're going to do is undo it in the reverse of the order of operations. So for example, in this particular equation, we have negative 5x plus y is equal to negative 56. Since we are multiplying x by 5 and then adding y, we want to undo the add y by subtracting y. And we'll do that to both sides using the subtraction property of equality. So we'll subtract y from both sides. On the left-hand side, the y's are going to cancel out and leave us with negative 5x. And on the right-hand side, we end up with negative y minus 56. Now, it's a habit of mine to put that with the variable first. You could have that negative 56 minus y. That's perfectly acceptable. And then the second thing we did, or we undid the addition of y by subtracting y. So then we're going to undo, multiply by negative 5 by dividing each side by negative 5. We show that by writing each side as a fraction. And when we do that, that would give us a negative 5 on each side. The negative 5s on the left, they divide out, leaving us with the x. And on the left-hand side, we can't simplify this algebraic fraction except for dividing out a common factor of negative 1. Since each one of the terms in this thing are negative, we can divide it out and write it as a positive. So this would be y plus 56 over 5. And that would be our first literal equation, or solving our first equation for a specified variable. Solving literal equations, example 1t, we're told to solve 2x minus 4y is equal to 7 for x, and let's just underline that variable so we know what we're talking about. That's the one we want to get by itself. In fact, we could box it off if you want. 
we're going to take a look at this do-undo chart. What are we doing to x in terms of the order of operations? The order of operations tells us we would multiply before we subtract. So the first thing we're doing to x is we are multiplying by 2. And then we are subtracting 4y. So what we're going to have to do in our undo steps is we're going to have to add 4y. And then we're going to have to divide by 2. So in this case, to solve this equation for x, we'd add 4y to both sides using the addition property of equality. On the left-hand side, since negative 4y and 4y are opposites, they cancel, or they become 0. And that leaves us with the 2x. On the left-hand side of the equal sign, we have 7 plus 4y. Get used to writing with the variable first, if you're dealing with just x and y. So it would be 4y plus 7. And we just did our plus 4y on our undo section of our chart. Now we need to divide each side by 2. We show that work by writing each side as a fraction, divide each side by 2. On the left-hand side, the 2's divide out, leaving us with the x solve for now, and x is equal to, now in this case, some people say that this is simplified, 4y plus 7 over 2, because this algebraic, algebraic fraction cannot be simplified into two terms, 2 can't go into 7, so some people say this is simplified. If you're looking at it in terms of uh, simplifying each term, uh, we or expressing it as a decimal if you can, or are allowed, um, this would simplify into 4y divided by 2y, which gives 2y. And 2 goes into 7 three and a half times, so that'd be 3.5. Or another way to express that would be x is equal to 2y plus 7 halves. If you left that as an improper fraction, or you could even change that to a mixed number if you wanted to. Uh, this is technically simplified here, so I'm going to circle it. But these are also acceptable answers. We're still solving literal equations here, and we're in example 2t. And the difference between example 1t and example 2t is the fact that we're asked to solve for y in this case. So we're going to want to be ultimately solving for y. You can box that sucker off. I learned that from a colleague of mine. So what we do here to y is we are first multiplying by negative 3. Remember, when we ask what we're doing to the particular variable, or the specified variable. We ask what we're doing to it in terms of the order of operations. And so we multiply by a negative 3. And then we are subtracting 4x. Now you may not think of this as a subtract 4x because, in, in fact, when we read this, this is negative 4x minus 3y. But if we reordered these terms and wrote this as negative 3y minus 4x is equal to 24, we would see that we are multiplying by negative 3 and then subtracting 4x. So in our undo chart, we have to undo the do column in reverse order and inverse operations. So we would add 4x first. And then we would divide both sides by negative 3. So let's go ahead and do that. Solving the original equation, and it's negative 4x minus 3y is equal to 24. We first have to add 4x to both sides. These cancel, leaving negative 3y. Now, don't lose track of that negative there. It's negative 3y, not just minus 3y. When you get rid of that x term in front, it becomes a negative. Equals, now on the right-hand side, we'll just write that as 4x plus 24. Now we have to divide both sides by a negative 3, because that's the second thing in our undo chart, dividing each side by a negative 3. The negative 3's on the left cancel out, leaving me y. And on the right-hand side, you can feel comfortable expressing your answer as this, because it is this, if you will, 4x plus 24 over negative 3, because technically this algebraic fraction can't simplify. Negative 3 does not divide into both terms in the numerator. 
We can, in fact, though, write this as y is equal to negative 4 thirds, dividing that 3 into both terms in the numerator. 4x divided by negative 3 can't simplify, so we just write that as negative 4 thirds x. And then to get the second part, we take 24 divided by negative 3, which gives negative 8. So that could be negative 4 thirds x minus 8. Either one of these answers is it answer here you're going to learn is in slope intercept form y is equal to mx plus b but we'll learn about that in a later lesson solving literal equations example 3t it says solve negative 3x minus 4y for negative 28 or equals negative 28 for y so we're solving for this variable here y Let's box that off so we know what our ultimate goal is. So what we have to do is figure out what are we doing to y in terms of the order of operations. What we're doing to y here is we are multiplying by negative 4 and we are subtracting 3x. Now you, you might think to yourself, well, Mr. Polarski, that's not subtracting 3x from 4y. Well, in fact, it is. We can reorder these terms, this negative 3x and this minus 4y. And if we did that, it'd be negative 4y minus 3x. And you would see, if you rewrite that, we could rewrite this as negative 4y minus 3x. And that's just reordering terms equal to negative 28. If you want, you can write it like that if you, if you feel more comfortable doing that. But you don't have to. So what we're doing to y is we are adding negative 4 and subtracting 3x. So to solve this equation for y, we undo what we do to it in reverse order and opposite operation or inverse operation. So since lastly we do subtract 3x, we're going to add 3x to both sides. And then we're going to divide each side by a negative 4. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's add 3x. So we add 3x to the negative 3x. And then we add 3x to the other side. The 3x's on the left cancel, and that leaves us with negative 4y. A lot of students make a mistake here and put this as a positive 4y, but it's not. You've got to remember to bring that subtraction down as a negative. And on this side, we end up with 3x minus 28. Some students, some teachers write this as negative 28 plus 3x. I'm used to putting the variable first. You could put it the other way, but you're going to see in the long run that this is setting up for slope-intercept form. So anyway, what we're going to do is divide now each side by a negative 4. Here's that work. Divide each side by a negative 4 by the division property of equality. When we divide each side by 4, that gives us the negative 4 is dividing out on the left, leaving us with 1y. The y is now solved for it. Now this some people say it can be simplified, or it can't be simplified, this algebraic expression. And technically it can't, because negative 4 does not divide into each term in the numerator. If we took this a step further, we could write this as y is equal to negative 3 fourths x, dividing this negative 4 into both terms, and then negative 28 divided by negative 4, which gives us a positive or a plus 7. So this could be considered simplified, and this would be what we're going to learn in the next unit is slope-intercept form. A times the quantity y plus 1, close the quantity, is equal to b for y. Now what makes this problem a little more challenging is that we have one more variable. Instead of two variables, we now have three. So let's take a look what we are doing to y so we can solve for it. So let's box that y off first. Let's start with that. It's always a good thing identify what we're solving for. And what we are doing to y in terms of the order of operations, in this case, because they're parentheses, we're doing this addition first. So we're adding 1, and then we are multiplying by a. So to solve this equation, we're going to have to do or undo, multiply by a, and add 1. So we do that reverse order, opposite operation. So we're going to first divide each side by a, and then we're going to subtract 1 to solve for y. So let's go ahead. First, you know, I always like to rewrite my equations. So the first thing I do is I'm going to divide both sides by a. Now this may look strange to you, but it's okay. We're dividing that whole side by a factor of a, and then we're dividing b by a. 
on the left hand side these a's cancel out they divide out a divided by a is 1 and a divided by a is 1 so that leaves us with y plus 1 on the left now the parentheses we don't need them anymore is equal to b divided by a next we subtract 1 from both sides the ones on the left cancel out because they're additive inverses they make 0 so that gives us y is equal to b over a minus 1. So they're solving a literal equation with three variables instead of just two. Example 5t, we're solving a known formula, the perimeter formula for a rectangle for the length. We're still solving literal equations, but we're working with an actual formula now. So it says solve p is equal to 2l plus 2w for l. If you didn't recognize this, what this is is the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. So what are we doing to L? Right there. Well, in terms of the order of operation, we're first multiplying by 2, then we are adding 2w. So in our do column, we are multiplying by 2, and then we are adding 2w. So in our undo column, remember it's the reverse and inverse operation here. So first we're going to undo the add 2w by subtracting 2w. Then we're going to undo the multiply by 2 by dividing each side by 2. Therefore, solving the perimeter formula for the length. So our formula is p is equal to 2l plus 2w. So first we have to subtract 2w from both sides. Two w's on the left are opposite, so they cancel out. Two l on the right of the equation. On this side, we'll have p minus two w. Next, we have to divide both sides by two. When we divide both sides by two. The two's on the right. They divide out, leaving us with one l. And over here, we could leave this as p minus two w over two. Or we could simplify that a little further as I've shown you, and that would become 1 half p minus w is equal to l. Or if we turn that around, the first one would be l is equal to p minus 2w over 2. Just turning that equation around and now turning this equation around, the length is equal to 1 half the perimeter, 1 half p minus the width. So there's some examples on solving literal equations and formulas for a specified variable.